the war you are in is two generations long. And I'm going to tell you what God is going to do with you the second week in November. What he's going to do is lift that depression cycle all of you. This thing has fought you since you were in seventh grade. This spirit of depression would come on and on, and partially because you don't know how to say no. And Satan knows that that generosity had been taken advantage of by two people. One of them you just got rid of last month, and it was an excruciating thing. You're still grieving over it right now. But God's going to turn that grief and make it glory. And he's going to make sure that, the, the, yeah, everything you sold and everything you let people borrow. God says without it even coming back, I'm going to be liberated. He's liberating you because you're more necessary in this house than what you know. Yeah. But you've been distracted by your willingness to please people. And today the Lord is removing that burden off of you in the name of Jesus. I just release that healing, that restoration anointing. They have flown from out of you. And the Lord says concerning your career, you have not reached a glass ceiling. You are frustrated, yeah. Yeah. feeling like you cannot go. I heard the Spirit of God say this. There's coming some layoffs so that you can be promoted. I see that happening all moving in your life. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise right now. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Come on, I feel the river flow. I said, I feel the river There are a lot of extremely gifted prophetic people in this church. This is going to be a refuge for the prophets of God. And God is going to do some things in this place where he's going to allow the gifts to move at a, an unprecedented level. And there's an assignment coming. You may want to take note of this. There's an assignment coming with this house against the spirit of Jezebel. And it's not going to be a person. It's going to be a prince that's operating over San Antonio. It's going to uh, move you in penetrative prayer, prayer against that spirit. And you're going to find a couple of things are going to happen. After that season, there will be several pastors that want to merge. They're going to say, I'm just going to bring my people and bring my congregation. There is an anointing on this man, woman of God, to reorientate people to their real callings. So they're going to be people who started churches that shouldn't have. Evangelists that started churches that shouldn't have. Itinerants that go places and have people and they should not be leading them. And they're going to come and bow and say, I'm giving my work to this place. I want to release my work to this place. There is an anointing for divine order upon this house. And there's an anointing to put people in the right places in this house. Who receives that? I believe that is the word of the Lord. The guy who led worship, are you married, sir? Where's your wife? Wife, come here. Your faithfulness has not been taken for granted, and it has been, and what I'm looking at is a war in between two rivers and two streams. One that has almost claimed you, and another one that was legitimately responsible for you. And something has happened to you in this place where you have been expanded and stretched even beyond your normal personality. Who you are when you are singing and who you are while you're leading worship is not who you used to be. You've begun to change yeah. in the glory. And God's begun to stretch out. Uh, you had a major assault at your identity and at your confidence that you've begun to heal over now. Satan was committed to making you feel like you were a failure. But you started to feel more fathered and more nurtured in the waters around this place. And what God is about to do is show you how inheritance works. And it's not going to work like it tried to work before with strings attached and with purchase prices and with barcodes over your forehead. It's going to work in a consistent way where you don't have to perform to receive it. Like a prince, God's going to gradually move you up in authority and in influence. You have abased yourself and humbled yourself. And God is pleased at how well you handle rebuke. I know nothing yeah. about it. But you have handled uh, 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 correction so well that God is going to respond to that and promote you in a massive, massive way. But here's what the Lord wants the both of you to know. You don't have to fear this marriage ending up like anybody else's. Yeah. No, no. This is going to be the first to reverse. The odds, familiarly speaking, are against you. But God's got a call on yeah. this marriage to undo a curse and, 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 and it normally happens in the realm of communication people 
you're both are born to degree of stubbornness. And, and what God is doing is proving that through meekness and through forgiveness, I can release healing through a whole family unit. Now, you are uh, very prophetic, and uh, there is a strong gifting uh, of the word of knowledge in you, but your problem is your mouth. You are really sharp uh, sometimes when you don't realize you're being as sharp as what you're being. And sometimes you're divided because you want to protect. And there have been things that have come to pass against him and even in this house that you foresaw and you didn't speak up on because you were afraid that you didn't have the right language to say. But God says you've been in a time of crushing in the secret place. And I'm going to tell you the exact area. It's been your patience. God's been dealing with you with your expectations, your deadlines, your timelines, and when you think things should happen before they could. The Lord has been doing this on purpose to keep you in a position of faith. There will come a day where you will say a thing and it will come to pass, and it will be instantly. There will come a day where God will use you so uh, profoundly, supernaturally, that you're going to have a tremendous anointing for rape victims. And you're going to have a profound anointing to people bound in sexual perversion. It's going to be uncanny, the degree of deliverance that flows through you. But you must make sure you don't fail the test of patience. God, in his faithfulness to this family, is going to keep you humble because of the level of money you will walk in. He's going to keep you in a place of patience because there is a degree of prosperity that's going to flow through this family in a way you have never, ever seen before. Sir, the gifts of the Spirit are about to start flowing through you. I see you singing and people screaming at the top of their lungs, screaming, leave us alone. The deliverance anointing is going to flow through your mouth and through your sound and through your song. You're getting ready to hear things at a frequency you've never heard before. And you're going to know what it is to flow in the heritage of God. You will not have the testimony of a lot of your peers and a lot of the people you used to know. You're not going to have the orphan story, the bastard story. You're going to know what it is to be groomed and planted and to flourish in that way. And every spoken word against you and your purpose and your destiny, we decree weightless today and we put promotion on you and your wife. It is so, and it is not otherwise. I want to speak to one more area concerning your family. You know, sometimes the Lord allows for miscommunication to happen, and, and what it feels like sometimes is that the Lord burns the whole tree down to regrow a new one. I see that there's some things that are about to happen that's going to allow you to speak up about years of things that you've been silenced over. Don't fight it. It's going to seem like the devil at first. There's going to be some conflicts that's going to manifest and come up that's going to give you the, the opportunity to vocalize how you feel like you were formed and the defenses and the braces that you had to walk in so that you would not be morphed or mutated or, or, or emotionally uh, done differently. And this will be the year of the greatest healing of your life. Hallelujah. I mean, from the inside out, he's going to heal you beautifully and you will have no regrets. Father, it is so and not otherwise in Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together. to stretch you in a way that's going to be a little uncomfortable, but it will be him. 
he's given you grace to redeem the last several series of your life. It has been so grievous and it's almost felt like you were out there yelling down a long tunnel and nobody was listening. But the Spirit of God is about to reverse the cycle of barrenness and you will be productive and you will flow in great productivity. Now I see what the Spirit of God is about to cause the government to become a blessing to you. You will find that there's going to be not just a grant, but there's going to be a series of grants released to you so that you can minister to a number of people. And there is a strong educational call, a strong call to the public school arena and school sector. God is getting ready to make a massive turn in that direction for you. And you're going to find that many of your peers are going to say that's too much, that's a bit too much investment, but the Lord has given you more than one pulpit. And this one is going to be in society through the lens of education and then ultimately through the lens of business. There will be such entrepreneurial grace that flows through the two of you. You will plant businesses like most men plant churches and you'll be really criticized for it. But the Lord is setting you up. Yeah. And he's also undoing what the devil tried to do to your personal portfolios. The, the devil tried to touch that thing and shake it up so immensely without you knowing it. But I heard the spirit of God say he's going to restore and he's going to add zeros to what was taken. I see a, a fraudulent attack against you. And the spirit of God says the gavel is coming down and he's going to release equity on your behalf. And it will be the sweetest victory you've ever seen in your life. Father, I prophesy that in Jesus' name. It is so and not otherwise. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. When I tell you the Spirit of God is so pleased with you, and he's pleased with you for a number of reasons. You've been like a man that's fought through lions and tigers and bears, and most of them you have fought on your own. And God has been dealing with you specifically this year about coming out of isolation. God is about to restaff your life with the type of brotherhood that you can be very transparent about where you are because Satan is afraid that your weakness is about to become a weapon. I see where there was a whole plan in hell to run you out of the kingdom and, and because of, of how you were burnt out when how church was done. I'm not talking about this place, I'm talking about another. How church was done and what you saw and what you learned. And then you came back in the mercy of God like a prodigal son and now your story has been, I've never seen God the way I now see him. Prepare yourself. You are positioned to prosper. God has been purifying you for an entire year. Matter of fact, you're coming up on an anniversary of a major life decision where you set, set yourself down before God to get your life in your heart but I heard your priorities in order and because you are not afraid to start over as it were the spirit of God is going to make sure that those opportunities you felt like you missed out on that you not that, that what you walked away from was a trap in another place it was a trap and now that you feel like you're settled and sober God's going to make sure you are rewarded from people who do not even know your name there is an immense call upon your life like a priest. I see that God's going to start to teach you the presence of God in a very unique way. And there will be angels that visit you to explain things to you about the scriptures. And it's going to come out in how you play. And it's going to come out in how you teach. And there's going to be an added authority on you because of what you've walked through. Even the thing that you feel most guilty about, the Spirit of God says you are reliving something he already forgot. Satan is trying to hold the thing over your head that the Lord has blocked out of his memory. He does not remember it anymore. It's a lie from the powers of hell to keep you out of your potential. Woe be unto any man that curses you. The glory of God is on your life. Come on, people, say some dance for the Lord. Hallelujah. There's coming a massive inroad of men to this church, and it's going to be unusual men, men with PTSD. Men who have been raped and molested. Men who were dishonorably discharged from the armed forces. There is something in you, an authority in you, because of a death attempt you escaped. Glory to God. I see when there was a point where Satan wanted to kill you, and he wanted to take you out of here a couple of times. And, and, and the way he did it was by making you a paranoid person, by looking over your shoulders and feeling like something was after you. And you've seen some things that no human being should have seen and lived through. But I heard God say, because you were willing to take your strength and submit it to him, you are like Moses. You are extremely meek, and you keep your strength 
strength yeah. under that command. You are a man yeah. for whatever yeah. reason. You under, I'm looking at your shoulders and you understand rank and stripes and you understand what it is to march in foul and to yeah. respond to the commands of a leader. And the Lord says exactly how you were trained is what I'm about to use you to do. Even in this ministry, there's a multiplying spirit that's about to come upon you. But I heard God say this, don't be so hard on your presentation. What God is going to do is give you a creative way to present kingdom truth. And it's going to appeal to people, men, the young, the old. There is a growing demographic of male that's coming in this place. And you're going to be used of God to restore their manhood. The Lord says, watch and see if I won't send transgender men in this church. And the glory of God will come upon them. And the Lord says, the father's heart and the father's embrace will reorientate men to their identity. And you will be responsible for undoing the curse against the male seed and for making sure that families are restored. Oh yes, you have a strong anointing against divorce. Oh yes, I see it. You have a strong authority against divorce. And God's going to send a lot of men on the brink of leaving their wives and you're going to have them. You know how some people have an anointing to heal bodies and stuff? You have an anointing to heal marriages. That thing is upon you. Don't allow Satan to make you feel guilty anymore. Oh yes, the Holy Spirit has given you a healing and a resurrection anointing against the curse of divorce. It is so in your life and not otherwise. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Ah. Glory to the Son of God. I want you to be here. Yeah, I'm almost done. And we're going to pray a little bit. Lift your hands, ma'am. There is a very profound evangelistic anointing upon your life. And the Spirit of God is going to take what hell wanted to take in you to make you rebellious to make you somebody who moves in powerful revival I see that there is a very strong miraculous calling upon your life even the way you got to the planet was in and of itself a miracle you were not supposed to be here Satan had a strong plan to make sure that there was trauma to you before you were born and when you got here the angel of the Lord followed you all the way up until you were 12 or 13 to block your introduction to things Satan was trying to recruit you and he was trying to recruit you through several groups of people because he knew that later on God would give you major influence in the hearts of men right now in your mouth there is a poetic power and there was a very strong lyrical anointing to be able to sew together the truth of the word of God and undo lies in the hearts of men God has given you the ability to permeate intellects and philosophies and there are times when you feel insecure about it but if there was a such thing as a woman that reminded God of David you would be it there is a very profound divinity calling upon you and you've not begun to see what God's going to do with you in this church with young adults with youth you're going to see them gathered around you as you share the word of God and break the power of lust off of them. There is a very profound anointing for you. So whatever you do and whatever is discouraging you right now, don't like the bait. Satan has been talking to you for 48 hours about shutting up. And right now in the name of Jesus, that muscle that's been trying to be on your mouth, don't bite the bait. There is a loosing of your tongue and a loosing of your story and a loosing of your ears and a loosing of your family. Oh, yes. There is a loosing going on around you. Now, here's your problem. you got to learn how not to wear other people's burdens as yours. Okay? And whatever is happening that's contributing to your lack of peace, the Spirit of God is about to give you boldness to shut the door. You need time to concentrate. Even that means making a shift, okay? Father, I release bold courage to do what you've called her to do. In the glorious name of Jesus, I magnify you. Is there a such thing as a house prophet here? Do you have like a person who's over that? It would be the same thing. Isn't that crazy?
that's aimed at how the shift is about to happen in your life. Handle it very well and in tremendous transparency because this is a season of divine multiplication. I'm seeing rivers, rivers of people flowing out of both of you. Just multi you are in a season of pouring out and it's like an offering. Okay, and you're pouring out for the season that is yet to come. Be very sober about who you invite to your space because God is setting you up to increase in the anointing, but it's going to manifest the more you give it out. It's very, very, very strong. Father, let that air in her grace come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let that air, yeah, 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 yeah. Let that air in her grace come upon them in the name of Jesus and let the call of God that is upon this church be made manifest tangibly in them. And you know, you don't lay hands nearly enough like you need to. I see the healing anointing getting ready. It's flowing through you even now. I see that creative miracles flowing through you. It's going to be very strong. Very, 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 very strong. Very, very, very strong. Very, very, very strong. Lord, that Ezekiel thing, put it on him in power. Put it on him in power. Yes, put it on him in power. In the glorious name of Jesus. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you in a time of prayer. I'm going to let this microphone go. We're going to pray this thing through about this season in this house. Does this make sense? And we're going to pray this through really strongly. This is a creative process of God. God is watching what you are willing to do when you don't have enough. He's watching what you're willing to do when you don't have enough. Amen. He's watching what you're willing to do when it seems like you don't have everything you should have. Okay. Lady with the bass. First of all, can I just say how much that blesses me? I was totally distracted uh, walking in. I couldn't get into nothing because I'm like, that is just uh, amazing. Okay. But I want to send the word of the Lord. I want to send the word of the Lord to your family. You are about to be put on evangelistic assignment and an assignment of reconciliation. You have been immensely stressed with the pressures of your family. Specifically, we're trying to defend why you chose what you chose and why you won't move uh, uh, how they want you to move, okay? And there have been uh, some storms that have come that, uh, to your, your household uh, on the maternal side that's making you almost feel guilty for not being there through a rough time. This is October. This stuff started to happen in June when these conversations started to come very consistently and you, it surfaced a whole lot in you and you didn't know exactly how to manage it. Manage it. But because in, the way you are is that you don't like to be a burden, you suppress a lot of that stuff and now you're at your peak. You can't handle another thing right now. You can't handle it. That is why the Spirit of the Lord wants you to stay still. When you don't know what to do, you're not supposed to do anything. You are following the direction of the Lord for your life. And the Spirit of God is going to do a thing where you don't have to continue to defend that to your family. Does that make sense? Now, what I see is there is a ministry called that God's going to drag you in because of a man in your family who didn't answer. Oh, somebody before you was anointed to preach the gospel and refused. God invited him to come to the table and he would not. And so now there is an oil. That's how they stay. Oh, they you. There is an, an oil coming upon you that you feel like is too big and it's too much and I just want I just want to finish what I start because that's what they keep telling me is that I never finish what I start. Not only is there a finishing anointing, but there's going to be an oil of proclamation. Your testimony is going to save hundreds of lives. Satan is trying to do something to put you in some false arms. But I heard the Spirit of God say, God's going to be your comforter. And he's going to be your rock. Have peace. He sees you. And he's not ignoring you. You just don't feel heard. There have been nights when you cried your eyes out trying to figure out how to make this stuff right by your family. But I heard the Spirit of God say, you're trying to please some who will never be pleased. Love him. And as you love him, he'll turn their hearts to see God the way you do. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. God ministering to the men you love. Sometimes when you are a good woman and a good mom and a good everything, sometimes that good turns into God. 
God has allowed you to face some things this year to teach you you're not God. You can pray. You can go and do favors. And you can empty your bank account. But it doesn't make you God. And you've been doing something to try to win favor with a man of the masculine species. And it's not really working. What God is saying is if you get out the way, I will turn his heart. And what I'm going to do is put my word in his mouth. I see you praying some things for like the last six years that have come to a peak. And the Spirit of God is going to use them and pour those prayers out. And you're going to find that in the middle of one of the greatest tests, God's going to turn this thing around and confirm that you've not failed. There was not, you keep beating yourself out about whether or not you compensated enough. And Satan is attacking your identity in that area. But I heard the Lord say, Lady, you're going to see that these pieces are about to become a finished product. And I'm going to use everything you walk through, even your contemplations about packing your boxes up to move. I'm going to, I'm going to send the clarity to you about why it was necessary that you not move. And why it was necessary for you to maintain the vow to God by staying put.
need that for the future. Oh, yes.
Yeah.